Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language and the words we use every day. Let's take a look at the epic story of how one noun became an adjective. Epic. Adjective. Impressive, heroic, or remarkable. Also related to or with similar themes and traits as an epic poem. Noun, a genre of poetry, generally long, with rhyming or alliterative verse. History and etymology. Okay, well, it's not that epic. And it's actually pretty recently that this definition change took place. 1983 is when the first time epic was recorded as being used to describe impressive or remarkable as an adjective. In USA Today, September 29th, 1983, when University of Florida linguistics professor David Ferries asked 350 sophomores for samples of college slang, here's what he found. Killer is a compliment, along with mint, awesome, prime, epic, golden, etc. I was born in 1983, and this usage of the word epic was the one I grew up with. It's the one I knew. I even assumed that the poems were called epics because they were long and about heroes and remarkable events. Prior to this definition, the word epic was primarily applied just to the poetry and the form that poetry took. Sometimes it would be applied to other art forms that took inspiration from epic poems containing remarkable events. Over time, people, mainly children, heard the word being associated with books, music, and movies that had themes and elements from epic poetry, but at the time they were unfamiliar with the epic poetry itself, or that it was even a genre. So they grew up hearing the word, describing awesome things. Like me, they may have assumed that the word simply meant remarkable, awesome, incredible. But really, the word originally referred to the voice, the medium of epic poetry, the medium epic poetry was created in. The Proto-Indo-European root of the word was vekev, the same as the original root word for voice. And again, I mentioned in a previous video, like vox populi, voice of the people. You've probably heard that phrase before some, somewhere. Prescription and commentary. With this word today, I wanted to go a little bit into language change and specifically definition changing because there's a lot of talk about people trying to change the definitions of words and I can see where a lot of these people are coming from with the change of words like racist or Nazi like I've discussed in other videos how changing the definitions of these words can be detrimental but changing the definitions of words isn't always some diabolical plot to th overthrow the country. Sometimes it's just children hearing words used in a way and not understanding the full context of them. They grow up using the word, they grow up hearing the word, and eventually their definition is the definition as they grow up and they, re they gradually replace the older generations. Their language becomes the language. And that's just the way it's been for centuries. That's naturally how human beings work. And if there's one thing we don't want to do is deny the proper function of how a human being works. Now, the word epic began to describe people telling a poem, telling a story. And that was what it meant. It was literally meant voice initially. And eventually it came to describe a specific genre of poetry, 
long, exciting stories with heroes and villains and adventure. And like I said, when I grew up, I was using it to mean things like outstanding, fabulous, and impressive. Now, just because I'm, as a child, was imparting those definitions onto the word doesn't mean I was actively trying to undermine the language. In fact, the words like outstanding originally described something st that stuck out. Like, something that stuck out was didn't fit with the rest of what was there. Fabulous had to do with fables. It's literally the same transfer from something about a story to a descriptor of something wonderful. And impressive was used to mean something that was capable of being impressed upon. This way of changing the definition of a word, this natural process involving children and parents and families and growing is completely natural. And there's another type of setting the definitions of word words. It's what's called prescriptivism. And that's not even that bad of a thing. That's what has allowed us to continue to read things like Shakespeare for centuries because our language change has slowed to a point where we can now read things from hundreds and hundreds of years ago in our own language that we natively understand more or less but the natural state of human language is in constant change constant renewal and we see that today with words like epic it still has its old meaning it still has its new meaning and the prescriptivists that have locked in old definitions for words have helped us to do that the thing that I think we really need to fight against is meaning change from the top down. When someone tries to tell you, oh, woman doesn't mean woman anymore, or racist doesn't mean racist anymore, that's the kind of thing that you need to look out for. If it doesn't sound like it's a historical definition, if it doesn't make sense to you in the way they're using it, they're possibly using it wrong. I do recommend when someone tells you something means something else, look into it. If it's an older definition of the word they're using and not something that's been tacked on later intentionally by someone else, at that's the point that you need to check for an agenda. Because when definition change is agenda-driven, that's when there's a problem. When it's natural and the meaning changes because that's the meaning children heard the word being used as growing up, it's completely natural and fine. In fact, that's what makes our languages beautiful is the variation and the difference even between the United States, Canada, England, and Australia and everywhere else English is spoken it has diversified beautifully and that's what makes it so fun to examine these words like I do on this channel every day thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please leave a like if you feel you've learned something Subscribe and share it with a friend. And until next time, keep on learning.